All righty. So this is going on page 23 when we are done. Okay, so we are reviewing factoring, okay? Even though this is in your summer assignment, it's definitely a big, huge review. Want to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, again, I will say, if the only way you have factored over the last couple years is with photo math, you better get this figured out. And the only way you get better at this is by practicing, okay? Yeah, you know, but... Okay, so... We're going to start off pretty basic. GCF, greatest common factor. Now, I will say there are times when maybe you only need to factor out a common factor. You don't really care if it's the greatest common factor. Like, let's say that this was, um, ha I had a Y in the denominator that I wanted to cancel out. Then I could factor out the Ys and not worry about the numbers. But this is particularly, this is telling me greatest common factor. So it needs to be the greatest one. So of the two numbers, 24 and 54, what would be the GCF of the just the numbers? Six, okay? So that is six. And he, remember, he doesn't disappear. You factor him out. He still has to hang out out front. And then how many Y's can I factor out? Three. So it's six Y cubed. Then that leaves me with four what? Y minus nine. See how easy that is? Like, that should be pretty easy. I hope. All right, so then we look at number two. So when I look at 51 and 17, well, 17 is a prime number, so the only chance of me being able to factor out a number is if um, 17 divides into 51. Does 17 divide evenly into 51? Three times. Three times 10 is 30. Three times 7 is 21. Add them together, you got 51, right? So I can factor out a 17. How many A's can I factor out? Three. How many B's? Four. So that leaves me with three A what? To the fifth. No B's, right? Plus what? B. Just B. We good? Hopefully this, hopefully you're going through this and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's easier. Yeah, yeah, I remember that and I can do that. Or whatever. Okay. So now let's talk about difference of squares. This comes up a lot. And it's very simple, but you have to recognize what it is, right? Doesn't matter how easy something is, if you don't recognize it, that's what you're supposed to be doing. So let's first talk about what our perfect squares are. Perfect squares would be like 1, um, 4, 9, 16, 25, okay, then 36, 49, and so forth and so on, right? Okay. So, your rule for factoring difference of squares. If you have a squared minus b squared, okay? Something squared minus something squared. It is super easy. It is a plus b times a minus b. That's your difference of squares, okay? So, if you have a binomial, you have two terms and they're being subtracted. You look at it, and then you ask yourself, okay, is, can I take the square root of this? Is this a perfect square? Yes. Is this a perfect square? Yes. So that means what you end up with is you have two sets of parentheses, one's plus, one's minus. All right. Square root of 36w squared would be 6w. Square root of 25 is 5. And then this would be 6w minus 5. That's it. It's that easy. Okay? All right, so we look at 4. We have 1 over 144. Can you take the square root of 144? Yes, it's 12, right? So what's the square root of 1 over 144? It's just 1 over 12. It's 12 to the negative 1. I think that's where you're getting the negative, like you'd have a negative exponent. But we don't want to work with the negative exponents right now. We need to understand them. But it's just 1 over 12. That's all it is. It's not that big of a deal. And then when you take the square root of um, variable or exponents, just like here, this w squared, we took the square, we divided by 2, so those both, both basically have 1 on them. So I can take the square root of this. This is going to be 1 over 12 plus r cubed s squared times 1 over 12 minus r cubed s squared. 
So those are some examples of how it could show up. What you're really going to see probably more often than not is something like just x squared minus 49, right? And you have to recognize, hey, that's a difference of squares. So is that easy? Yeah, it's super easy. This is just x plus 7 times x minus 7. There's no fancy anything, right? It's just a very simple rule. You also need to recognize when you are given something like this that, hey, that's just a difference of squares, and you in instantly know what it is. You don't have to do any crazy multiplying stuff out. Okay, make sense? We good? All right. Notice there's a difference of squares. There is no sum of squares. That does not exist, only if it's subtracting. When we get to cubes, we do have sum and difference of cubes. So let's start with the sum of cubes. My perfect cubes could be 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216, and so forth. Yeah, anything to the power of 3. Okay, so your rule for factoring, if it's a sum of cubes, it would look like this. A cubed plus B cubed. This is going to give you a plus b times a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Now, difference of, uh, difference of squares, I could have made that, and I could have forced that into factoring by grouping or whatever if we wanted to. This, basically, you have to know the rule. There's no other way to do it. But one thing you need to know for the rule is the acronym SOAP. Anybody heard that acronym for this before? This stands for same, opposite, Ooh. always positive. The patterns for sum and difference, the patterns are the same, the signs are different. And if you can remember this, we get our signs put in there, it's going to make everything a whole lot easier. So when I look at number seven, I can take the cube root of h cubed and I can take the cube root of 125. So every time I'm going to get a binomial and a trinomial, right? So I'm going to set it up like that. Then I'm going to put my signs in there. This is the sum of cubes. So my signs are the same. So there's a plus here. Opposite. So there's a minus here. Always positive. All right, get your signs put in there, and then you worry about the rest. I'm going to take the cube root of h cubed, which gives me h. What's the cube root of 125? 5. Okay. Then this term right here, you take the first one and you square it. It's h squared. This middle term, you multiply these two together. That makes it 5h. This one, you square the last one, is 25. So that's a pretty simple pattern, but you got to know it. And if you practice it some, you'll know it. Okay, but again, it takes practice. Any questions? All right, so let's look at number eight. Again, sum of cubes. So I'm going to have a binomial and a trinomial. I put in my signs. It is the same opposite always positive. What's the cube root of 8f cubed? 2f. Very good. What's the cube root of 27? 3. Okay. So then I take this first term and I square it and that gives me 4f squared here. Then I multiply the two together and I get 6f. Then I square the last one and I get 9. Okay. Any questions at all? Everybody understand where everything came from? Okay. So difference of cubes. So we have sum and difference of cubes. We only have difference of squares. There's no sum there. So my rule for factoring this, if I have a cubed minus b cubed, this will become a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. Okay. 
and I still run and remember soap. So I have a binomial. I can take the cube root of each one of these, so that's good. I'm going to have a binomial and a trinomial. I'm going to put in my signs. Same, opposite, always positive. This is a difference, so it's minus. Then it's plus, then it's plus. Now, I forget the signs. I don't care that that's a negative 343. That doesn't mean anything anymore. I'm just looking at 343. Okay, the signs have already taken care of themselves. All right, so I can take the cube root of x cubed. That gives me x. What's the cube root of 343? Seven. 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 All right, see if you can fill in the next three terms. It's the same pattern as it was for the other. So you can check yourself up here. I square the first one, multiply them together, square the second one. Don't, and again, don't, you ignore, once you've put the signs in there, all you're looking at is numbers. Now the signs don't, you know, don't do anything else with them. Okay. Any questions at all? Awesome. All right, then let's look at 12. So I can take the cube root of 125. I can take the cube root of 8v cubed. So I have a binomial and a trinomial. Same, opposite, always positive. something just click? Good. That's good when that happens. All right. What's the cube root of 125? Five. What's the cube root of 8v cubed? 2v. All right. See if you can fill in the rest of those. Don't throw credit. Those buses stress me out. Sorry, tables have adjusted here. All right. Any questions? We got this? Okay, good deal. All right, so let's look at the back. So we got trinomials. Did I, did I need to go back? Yeah. You have questions on that? Do you understand why it's 10v? So I squared this, then this term is these two multiplied together. That's where the 10v came from, and then this is the squared. Okay. Alrighty. So trinomials. When you have a trinomial and A is 1, it should be a piece of cake. This is totally algebra 1, all right? But here's the mistake that gets made when you try and zip through it and you don't actually check yourself because nobody's making you check yourself anymore. Sometimes you have wrong numbers in there and then it doesn't make any sense, okay? So let's think about this. If A is 1, then I can jump to, all right, I know I can just, sub, I can just plug into some parentheses here. All right, and I know that since a is 1, this is m squared, this is going to be m, and this is going to be m. Before I worry about numbers at all, I want to think about my signs, because that's where things get weird. If this is negative, your signs are opposite. If this is positive, they're the same. It's either plus, plus, or minus, minus. But since they're opposite, or since it's negative, they're opposite. I have a positive and a negative, which means I need two numbers that multiply to give me 30, but subtract to give me 13. Will 3 and 10 work? No. Like, it looks good, right? But when the signs have to be opposite, 3 and 10 don't work. So what are my numbers? Negative 15 and 2. So do you see how if you think about the signs before you worry about the numbers, you're less likely to do something weird? Because that would be a very common wrong answer here. Okay. We good? Questions? Awesome. Now, 16, I have um, x to the fourth. Does that mean it's like crazy harder? 
No, A is still one. It's still set up just like a quadratic, right? This is um, squared and then this is half of that, which is one. This is to the fourth and this is half of it. So I can do the same thing. I can just jump to two sets of parentheses. Since this is x to the fourth, I'll have x squared and x squared. This is negative, so that means the signs are opposite. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me 20 and subtract to give me negative 1. What would those be? And a multiply to give me 20, subtract to give me negative 1. Negative 5 and 4, but yes, <laughs> it's okay because I have to have a negative one. All right, so can I factor more? Do I have a difference of squares? No, I have a difference, right? But this isn't a perfect square. If this was the four, could I factor more? Yes, can I factor this more? No, because there's no sum of squares. So I'm done, that's all I can do. Okay, we good? All right, so now number 17, A is not one. I can check for GCF. Unfortunately, there's not one. So there are different ways to factor this. I have found over the last couple of years because you know trends change or whatever, but I feel like grouping is what the majority of you have done. If you have a different way that's legal and it's not photo math or some other app, then I'm fine. I'm not saying you have to do it my way, okay? I'm, I'm gonna do it by grouping though because I think it makes the most sense because you can do it with other things. All right, so when I look at number 17 and I don't have um, a GCF, I'm gonna multiply two times negative seven going to give me a negative 14, right? And so since these signs are, or since this is negative, that means I need two numbers that multiply to give me 14, subtract to give me negative 13. What would that be? 14 and 1, right? Okay, so then this is, so I'm going to split this middle term and I'm going to get 2d squared minus 14d plus d minus 7. And when I split that middle term, at any point, if I was to add this back together, I got to get that back, okay? Because I'm not changing the value, I'm just changing the way it looks. So now I'm going to group these two together and group these two together and factor out the GCFs. So out of those first two terms, I have a 2D. That leaves me with D minus 7. Then usually when we're trying to factor stuff out, if all I can factor out is a 1, we don't worry about it because what's the point? But here it matters. All I can factor out is a 1, so it's going to be plus 1, and then d minus 7. Okay. So then this gives me 2d plus 1 times d minus 7. What questions do you have? Anything? Hmm. Where did I lose you? Bless you. Good. Okay, so I look at number 18. No GCF again. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 9. That gives me 36. This is positive, so that means my signs are the same. This is negative, so they're mo both minus. But all that really tells me right now is that I need two numbers that give me, or that multiply to give me 36 and add to give me 13. What would that be? How did I get 36 to begin with? 4 times 9. What's 4 plus 9? 13. Okay. So this is going to be 4 and 9. So I get 4q to the 4th minus 9q squared minus 4q squared plus 9. And pay attention to your exponents because that is a fourth and a squared. So otherwise, if you drop something somewhere, you're going to confuse yourself in a minute. All right, so when I look at these first two here, second two, here in the first two, I can factor out a q squared. That leaves me with 4q squared minus 9. Out of the second two, I can factor out a negative 1, and that leaves me with 4q squared minus 9. So this gives me q squared minus 1 times 4q squared minus 9. Can I factor some more? 
Yes. Is this a difference of squares? Yes. Is this a difference of squares? Yes. So I can factor both of them, and this will give me q plus 1, q plus 1 times q minus 1, and then 2q plus 3 times 2q minus 3. Ask me a question. Anybody got one? Okay. So we are factoring by grouping. This next section says factor by grouping. Well, I had options here. Here I really don't. And that's why I think factoring by grouping here is good because it works here too. This has four terms. It may look like it's more complicated. It actually makes it easier because we don't have to split the middle. To, like we had three terms. We had to make it into four. We already have four. So we just start with step two, basically. Um, going to group those and group those and factor just like we have been. Out of these two, I can factor out an h squared. That leaves me with 2h minus 3. Out of these two, I can factor out a 3. And that leaves me with... Oh, wait, oh my gosh. What the heck? Leaves me with 2h minus 3. And every time you do this, whatever is in the parentheses has to match. If it doesn't, you messed up somewhere or you can't factor it by grouping. So then this gives me h squared plus 3 times 2h mi oh, minus 3. Goodness. Can I factor any more? Nope. I'm done. That's it. Okay. Questions? All right. You do number 21. Or you do number 22, rather. When you're done with 22, check yourself with me. See if we agree. Can I factor any more? If this was a 9, could I factor some more? Yes, because I have a difference of squares. But I don't, so I can't, and I'm done right there. Okay. Questions? Anything? Don't be afraid to ask if I lost you somewhere. All right. Number 25, does it have a GCF? Yes, so go ahead and factor out the GCF in 25. Always check for the GCF first. Once we've factored out the GCF, can we factor some more? What do we call this situation? Difference of squares, exactly. So this is equal to 5n times n squared plus 4 times n squared minus 4. Make sure when you factor out a GCF that that guy that hangs out, that's hanging out front. You don't lose him anywhere. He's still got to be hanging out front. Um, can I factor some more? Yes. So obviously I can't do anything with this 5n. Can I do anything with this n squared plus 4? No. So it's still just n squared plus 4. But this is another difference of squares, right? So you get n 
plus 2 and n minus. Yes, and the order doesn't matter whether the minus comes first or second. I don't know. I would just always put the plus first. doesn't mean it has to be that way. All right. What questions you got? Anything? All right. Number 26. Is there a GCF? Yes. Okay. And whether it's 2 or negative 2, like, you know, I guess you could argue which one's better, but... If I'm going to have to um, factor after that, then I want this guy right here to be positive. So I want to factor out a negative 2. So I have a negative 2. That'll leave me with 3k squared plus 7k plus 2. Don't mess up on your signs there. So then a is not 1, so I can't jump to the parentheses. I'm going to have to factor by grouping. So 3 times 2 is 6. I'm going to need two numbers that multiply to give me 6, add to give me 7. 6 and 1. So this is equal to negative 2 times 3k squared plus 6k plus k plus 2. I've split that middle term. I now have four terms, and I can factor this by grouping. So there's going to be a negative 2. Then I'm going to use brackets instead of two sets of parentheses. You don't have to. I mean, you can use parentheses, but I like for them to be different for myself. Um, here I can factor out a 3k. That leaves me with k plus 2. Then I can factor out a 1, and that leaves me with k plus 2. I feel like if they're all parentheses, I get lost in the parentheses. So so then this gives me negative 2 times 3k plus 1 times k plus 2. That's your answer. Okay. What questions you got? All right. Then I want you to jump to number 30 and factor out your GCF. And anytime we skip stuff on the notes, you don't have to go back and do the questions we skipped. I mean, you can, but you don't have to. I just Sometimes there's too many examples on there. Yeah, so jump to 30. Go ahead and factor out the GCF in 30. Do what? Give a question. Yes, yes, yes. Three times two. Yes, that's one. Yeah, okay. If you get, after you factor out the GCF, if you want to keep going on 30, go ahead. I'll walk you through it in just a second. Yeah, plus 1 kind of runs together, and then k plus 2. Okay, so that's what it looks like after you factor out the GCF, right? A is 1. So that means I don't have to do the grouping thing, and I can jump to parentheses like this. Since this is z to the fourth, I would have z squared and z squared. Since this is positive, the signs are the same. Since this is negative, they're both negative. Two numbers that multiply to give me 4, add to give me 5, would be 4 and 1. Or 1 and 4, doesn't matter which one, what order they go in. Everybody with me so far? Where did I lose you? Ask me a question if I lost you. Because I promise you, you're probably not the only one. You just might be the only one that I can read your face, and you might be brave enough to speak up. Do you understand how I got my signs in here, how I knew they were negative? If this is positive, then the signs have to be the same. It's either plus, plus, or minus, minus. If this is negative, it makes them minus, minus. Okay, so then I need two numbers to multiply to give me four. My only options are two and two or one and four, right? But since these are the signs are the same, they have to add to give me this one right here. Okay. All right, 
Can I factor more from here? Yes, I absolutely can. So this gives me 6. This is a difference of squares, so I get z plus 2 times z minus 2. Can I factor this one? Yes, z plus 1, z minus 1. And I am done. Okay. If you're feeling a little unsure about this, this is one reason why we're going through it. If you're feeling pretty confident, you should be able to zip through the assignment, no biggie. If you're feeling a little unsure, go back and do some extra. It, it comes with practice. You have to practice. It's not going to just be a whoop, there it is. I mean, maybe for one or two people, but most people, your brains don't work that way. You practice it, and that's how you get it. Okay. Any questions at all? Greatest common factor. And for those of you that came in late and missed the first part of the notes, this video will be there for you to go back and get caught up on that.